Okay. We're going to talk about VLANs. That's the next section for the class is switching. And many of you that will go and start working in the field of networking and or security, anytime you're in a local area network, you're going to deal with switches before you really deal with routers. Okay? So everyone in this room, for instance, is connected somewhere to a switch. And when we talk about a size of a local area network, we talk about a collision domain, okay? When we say the size of a local area network, we're talking about a collision domain. And a collision domain needs to be as small as possible so that I have the most efficient use of my network. Because otherwise, what am I doing? Those of you recall that Within a wired local area network, I have collision sense, multiple access, collision detect, right? And within a wireless environment, I have the CSMA CA, and collision avoidance. And that is basically what I'm going to be most busy with, is avoiding or detecting collisions, and I don't have the most efficient use of my network. So therefore, we say segment your local area network so that you can create smaller collision domains and a large number of collision domains. Because as I increase the size of, as I increase the number of collision domains, I reduce the size of collisions on that domain. So why all of that talk in regards to switches? Well, switches enable you to do that, just that. When I take a switch and it has 24 ports and I connect 24 of you students to these ports, how many collision domains did I create? 24. Because I'm dedicating that port to you. There is nobody else sharing your link to that port on the switch. And so you don't have to be concerned with anybody else's traffic. Does that make sense to everyone? So I can create those uh, collision domains. So VLANs then to go a step further, because I can create those 24 collision domains, I still have to be concerned with broadcasts. In other words, if you send out on a, a message on the broadcast ID, everyone still has to see it. Unless you have a layer 3 device, which if you, if you don't need to go to another network, there's no need for you to have a layer 3 device. So what do you do? Well. When you create VLANs, you also limit the size of the broadcast domain. Switches, you make the most efficient use of your network by creating these collision domains. And now with VLANs, you also reduce the size of a broadcast domain. Does that make sense to everyone? No? So what are broadcasts? Let's give you an example of ARP. What happens with ARP? If I don't know your MAC address, but I know your IP address, I send out a broadcast. And now all of you are looking at this packet and going, I'm going to ignore it because that's not my IP. All right? That's a broadcast. But only the person with the right IP is going to respond. Now, every time on a large network, somebody needs to send an ARP request. Can you see how you guys are all busy? Your machines are all busy listening. Is this me? No, it's not me. Is this me? No, it's not me. Do you see how that reduces throughput on your network? You don't want that. So we, we, we say or, or we know that a layer 3 device reduces broadcast because it will not forward it. Because it looks at you and says, are you IP address 1111? If yes, I know where you go, and if not, I know where to send you. But it's not going to send you somewhere you don't belong and ask everybody to listen to you. And so in essence, to avoid purchasing a Layer 3 device, what I do is I take a Layer 2 device that is created an efficient collision area for me, collision-free area for me, and now I say, 
I'm going to create VLAN so you are in your own little virtual VLAN. That's a VLAN. So what does that mean? So if I have 24 ports and I have on my network payroll, human resources, marketing, and production, do you really need to get the traffic from payroll, their broadcast, their collision, or any of their traffic? If you are marketing, there's no reason for you to receive the information from a payroll department. So what do I do? What I do then is we have one switch. I know that payroll needs four ports for the payroll employees. I create a VLAN named a payroll, and I assign new ports to that VLAN only. Because I'm creating a virtual LAN, remember, two LANs cannot talk unless I have a layer 3 device. Same is true when I create this virtual environment for you. You will no longer be able to talk to marketing. Marketing will not be able to talk to you. If there needs to be communication between the two departments, what do I need? I need a layer 3 device. So what did I do by creating this VLAN? I created added benefit to broadcast, reducing broadcast. I created added benefit of security. Because now if you're marketing, you're not looking at any payroll information. Okay? Because you are in your own little VLAN. So a switch then allows me to reduce the size of a broadcast domain. And with VLANs. Yes. No. Because I can already reduce the size of my collision domain by just merely giving you a switch. Maybe this is, this is uh, what would probably make more sense is if you understood what we used to use instead of a switch. We used to use hubs. Right. And we all know that with a hub, I am forwarding broadcast, I'm forwarding collision, I'm forwarding everything. Because there is no filtering going on. Because it was a layer one device. So it didn't do any kind of filtering. It didn't say, oh, you have this MAC address, I know where you're supposed to go. It just sent it out to all of you, and everybody had to listen to it. So that's why it's important to understand why a switch. Why do I pay more for a switch? Well, because a switch will manage your traffic, filter your traffic, and in essence, allows you to dedicate bandwidth to what you're supposed to dedicate. So VLAN is basically I'm creating subnets. All right? I have a large network, and by creating subnets, I am logically, logically separating you. Well, the same thing is true here with VLANs. You're still all in one switch, but you can't talk. Because I have put you in your own little VLAN. So I have VLAN 10. And in VLAN 10, I go ahead and put Team 1. Team 1, you're in VLAN 10. Team 2, in VLAN 2, and so on. What did I do? What I just created is a separation of your traffic. It will not cross. So this ability then to segment my network logically allows me to separate you by functional areas, right? Um, when I worked at Briggs & Stratton or at Colgate Palmolive, that's exactly what I had. I had a switch farm and I had a server farm and I had a router farm. On my switch farm, everybody was separated by duty. So it didn't matter where you are. If you were on 14th floor for Colgate Palmolive and you were part of the payroll department, all I had to do was make sure that in my wiring closet you belonged to that VLAN. I didn't have to move you. I didn't have to move you to be with all of the rest of your uh, folks in your physical location. <coughs> so functional areas is another way that I can separate you. I put all of my teachers in one VLAN and all of my students in another VLAN because they have access to different things. So that that's... Some, these are some of the benefits, but now let's talk about by default. When you open up a switch, by default, it has one VLAN, and it's VLAN number one, and that's your management VLAN. What does that mean? What that means is that you need to manage your switch. And oftentimes, as I said, you are not locally present. I, oftentimes, I was in Milwaukee in my headquarters, and I had to connect to my switch in Rolla, Missouri, or Murray, Kentucky, or wherever it may be. So what did I do? I then SSH'd into my 
manage switch so that I can manage the switch. Right, so when you look at this, by default, it's that belongs to VLAN 1. That is also known as a native VLAN. Oftentimes, you books forget that part, or maybe it's just theory-based. But you need to write down, VLAN 1 is management VLAN and is the same thing as a native VLAN. So you are familiar with this, and that is the only VLAN. The management VLAN is the only VLAN that will receive an IP address on a switch. You do not assign IP addresses to ports on a switch. So you have 24 ports on the switch. None of the physical ports on your switch will receive an IP address when you're configuring a switch. A switch's IP address goes to its management VLAN. So how would I do that? I simply go into my, if my management VLAN, the default VLAN, is still VLAN 1, what I need to do then is INT VLAN 1. And then IP address, whatever that is, followed by subnet mask. And by default, it's turned off. I just need to issue the no shut command. That's the only IP address a switch needs. And by the same token, then, a switch cannot become your gateway. The switch doesn't forward you to any other networks. A router does. So when I have a switch on my network, and I have it connected or uplinked to a router, these clients down here will get a gateway of the router because the router forwards your traffic. So the added benefit of a VLAN is scalability, security, and network management. It's much easier to manage you when I know I'm managing networking, <coughs> network engineering right now or I'm managing marketing right now than it is for me to go, oh yeah, I'm managing SIU's network. Can you imagine? No way. Right. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't know where to begin. So that's what you do with a switch. You create those segments, those VLANs, and then you say, OK, psychology, you're right here. These are your IP addresses. And you've blocked them already with subnets. And then you block them by VLAN. You know what you're doing, and this is where we kind of shift from networking to also then add some security. And with ACLs, I think you kind of saw that merger from networking onto security. Because by now, we think you have the foundation of networking, and we can move on to talk to you a little bit about security. And then in 316, we talk to you a little bit more about security, not much. And then in 360, we hit you with nothing but, but security. And, and that, those are all you left. So then here, how did I add security? Well, when I create subnets, I add a layer of security. When I create VLANs, I add another layer of security, and that's what we know as defense in depth. The antivirus protection on your, on your host, the firewall, host-based firewall, then the layer on the switch, and then the layer on the router, and then the layer on the firewall, you need all of that to, in essence, secure your network. Anyone missing the, the right resources will be your weakest link. Because as an intruder, I need to know just one thing, one door. And you need to make sure all doors are locked. Okay. So that's why we say defense in depth is the way to go. And so you have to look at all of these measures that we're taking as a measure of security with our networks. Any questions on this one? <laughs>